Hasbro's Jabba the Hutt with Two-Headed Announcer set was released in mid-1999, just before the release of The Phantom Menace in theaters, and at the same time as the Jabba Glob figure which I covered recently. It included an exclusive two-headed announcer figure, and had spitting action and real feel skin. This means that not only did Hasbro have two Jabba figures in stores at the time, they both involved some sort of bodily function. This figure is based on the iconic scene where Jabba bites the head off the frog-like Chuba and spits it at a gong to start the pod race. If you think this is a bit of a thin premise to base a figure on, you're right. But then again, making figures for characters who were only on screen for a second is kind of Hasbro's thing, so this is nothing by comparison. Seriously, I think this guy had a figure. On the back of the box, you can see the included starting gong and two-headed announcer figure. Two heads for the price of one, I guess. You can also see Jabba's two action features, spitting a chupa head and spitting water. Two for the price of, oh, never mind. Finally, you can see the toy's try me feature, which allows you to touch Jabba's real feel skin. Allow me to stick my finger in Jabba's hole for you. Wait, here's the contents of the set. Let's ignore Jabba's face for the moment and concentrate on his body. It's pretty well sculpted. Sure, it's definitely based on the CGI Jabba from Episode 1, but it's well done. Both the body and head are made of a soft, squishy rubber. And the paint is actually fantastic. They've used several different colors and blended them together really well using airbrushing. Just look at that. I'd love to get a paint job like this on a modern Jabba figure. The Chuba is sculpted to his left hand, but you can remove its head and insert it in Jabba's mouth. Push down on his right arm to launch the Chuba at supersonic speeds. This is actually pretty fun, but it can go a long way if you're not careful. But I keep coming back to this face. There's something deeply disturbing about it. While the rest of it is well sculpted, your eyes are always drawn to that green plastic plug in his mouth. This is a classic example of an action feature ruining an otherwise excellent figure. Sure, I guess it looks a little better with the tuba head in his mouth, but then it reminds me of a pacifier. Yeah, that's not really an improvement, is it? Couldn't they have come up with a better solution for this? For that matter, did he really even need an action feature at all? Well, I guess we better look at the other action feature while we're at it. Yes, you know what time it is, Jabba. Stick Jabba's head underwater and then squeeze his tail to make him suck it up. Squeeze his tail again to make him shoot a stream of spit. Sure, he never did this in the movies, but at least they don't have him peeing. Oh, for the love of... Really, Hasbro? That's where you decided to put the drainage hole? I opened up this figure so you can see the mechanism. There's a plastic bladder inside that fills with water. This thing was not easy to open up, by the way. It's really glued in place. I cut myself twice and I was just using a screwdriver to pry it open. I'm literally shedding blood for you, gentle viewer. A few years ago, I acquired a set of documents related to the production of this figure. As you can see, it says Jabba with Hex and Rex, Hex and Rex being the original name of the two-headed announcer. These include things like communications with Lucas Licensing, uh, reference drawings, design drawings, proposals for various features that they were considering including in the figure, as well as uh, lists like this that show what materials the figure is made out of and breakdowns of the entire cost to make the figure and what they expected to make off of it. It's really all fascinating stuff, at least for me as a toy nerd, so I thought I would uh, pick out a few of my favorites and introduce them to you. These are some early concept drawings showing different versions of the figure they were considering. This one was going to use a syringe type squirter and had a solid rubber tail with a wire in it for posing. This one used a squirt gun type squirter that would have you pushing down on Jabba's head to make him spit. 
and this one used a spit missile that would have been launched using a button in his stomach. At this point, it seems that they thought that Jabba was just spitting at the gong rather than spitting the tuba's head at it, and that initial misunderstanding may be why we have the water-squirting feature in the finished toy. These more finished drawings are presumably from later on, and show that they not only had water-squirting and spit-projectile versions in mind, but also a slime-squirting version that would have included a container of slime, just like the Jabba Glob figure did. You may notice that the gong here doesn't look much like the gong from the film, or that this face looks a bit different than the one on the final figure. These were both mentioned in a note from Lucas Licensing. The notes read, I that is smaller normally should be the one that is squinting, concerned about mouth puckering too much, and gong is not accurate, should wait for reference. On the one hand, I'm really impressed that they were this concerned about making sure that the character was represented accurately. On the other hand, while the documents up till now have all been Xerox copies, these are actually hand-drawn design documents. They detail the internal workings of the various versions that they were considering making. I think they're fascinating just to look at. I also have this pencil drawing of the front and back of the Hex and Rex figure. It's really well done just as a piece of art, and I think if the final figure looked like this it would have been a lot better. They removed the cape for one thing. The two-headed announcer was originally supposed to be played by two people in makeup, and Hasbro based their figure on this design. Another note from Lucas Licensing says, Please note that this character has no further development and may be cut from the film. They kept the character in the end, but at the last minute switched to a CGI version. It must have been frustrating for Hasbro to have to deal with sudden changes like this, they apparently didn't have time to redo the figure to match the changes, so they ended up releasing the set using the original design. They did release a figure of the updated two-headed announcer design in the year 2000 as a separate figure, though. There aren't as many foreign versions of this as some of the previous sets, since they apparently tried to cram every possible language onto one European package. This has six languages in all. UK English, Spanish, Italian, French, Dutch, and German. The back is even more text-heavy, and the side with various warnings and copyright notices is just crazy. I also have this Kenner Standard version. Kenner used to put these tags on products that were inspected for various quality control issues, and even though Hasbro bought Kenner a few years beforehand, they were still using the Kenner Standard tags. As you can see, there's a sticker here. I carefully peeled it off a while back to see what was underneath, and apparently there was a missing apostrophe here that they were correcting. This may be the only box like this in existence. Jealous? If you enjoyed this video, please like it. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing. I'll be making more in-depth videos like this one, as well as reviews of other Star Wars-related products.